be the case scenario so it's a case of a 62 year old man has undergone an open surgery for fracture neck of femur 3 days after the surgery the surgical site showed pus discharge erythema and a tenderness so you have local pus discharge erythema and tenderness at the surgical site the discharge uh, collected from the incision site was sent for culture which has grown methicillin resistance of staphylococcus aureus so it's a typical case of surgical site infection which has taken place after 3 days of uh, surgery of a case of fracture neck of femur so it's a typical case of surgical site infection where you have developed the local pus discharge erythema and tenderness and mrsa has grown in uh, culture so let us discuss surgical site infection uh, what is the definition of uh, surgical site infection ssi has been defined as any infection that develop at the surgical site within 30 days of surgery most of the surgery the ssi uh, develops uh, within 30 days of the uh, date of surgery except few surgeries where 90 days has been taken as a cut off those include breast cardiac and joint surgery including the implant surgeries where the ssi can happen uh, uh, within 90 days of the surgical procedure otherwise for most other surgery the ssi the time frame is taken as 30 days okay so ssi can affect up to one third of uh, patient who have undergone the surgical procedures so if you do not take appropriate control measures ssi can happen up to one third of uh, surgical uh, procedures therefore in india there are various uh, studies who have reported ssi from a range of 4 to 11 per 100 surgeries so so ssi is always expressed per 100 so per 100 surgery around 4 to uh, uh, 11 percent will be the ssi rate which have been uh, reported various uh, uh, reports of Uh, uh, various studies in india and please uh, remember it may go up to one third of the patient if you do not take appropriate uh, control measures so now we will see the microbiology of ssi uh, the etiological agent implicated in the pathogenesis of ssi it depends upon the surgical procedures okay so if the surgical procedure involves skin and soft tissue okay if the if the ssi are, uh, are develops over skin and soft tissue then uh, then the common skin uh, commensal uh, such as uh, staphylococci uh, may be the most common agent to cause ssi uh, suppose if it involves the viscous like the bowel okay uh, like the gi bowel then the most common organism implicated may, uh, may be the various intestinal uh, commensal uh, such as e coli klebsiella and all the intestinal uh, commensals may be the important agent so uh, so again it uh, depends upon the site of uh, surgical procedure uh, whether it is a superficial surgery or it is a deep surgery uh, and which organs are involved in the surgical procedure okay the source of infection uh, from which they are also acquired is also important endogenous uh, source of infection is a patient own skin or uh, mucosal flora exogenous source is the operative uh, personnel or instrument the organism contaminated with the hands of the operating uh, personnel or the instruments contaminated with the organism that may be the exogenous source of infection okay so the point number 1 is it depends upon the site of the surgery point number 2 is it also depends upon the source of the infection endogenous infection is the patient own skin or uh, mucosal flora exogenous is the either the healthcare workers the the operating surgeons hands or maybe the instruments uh, which are used in uh, uh, surgical procedures inoculum load is very very important they say that gi surgeries uh, there is always a higher risk of ssi uh, because the gi intestinal flora the inoculum load is very very high so if they will be spilled over then the development of ssi risk is is uh, very high it also depends upon the virulence of the uh, causative organism higher uh, virulent organisms uh, there is always a higher risk of ssi now i will discuss the various risk factors for the development of ssi so the so the risk factors may be again patient related 
प्रोसीजर और सर्जरी रिलेटेड ऑर्गेनिज्म रिलेटेड एंड वेरियस एनवायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स पेशेंट रिलेटेड अगेन हायर द एज एक्सट्रीम ऑफ एज विल हैव ए मोर रिस्क ऑफ सर्जरी मान न्यूट्रिशन इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज ओके स्किन कॉलोनाइजेशन प्रायर टू द सर्जरी इफ द पेशेंट इज ए कॉलोनाइजर ऑफ वेरियस ऑर्गेनिज्म सच इज एम आर एस ए कैरियर ऑल दो इंडिविजुअल्स हु आर स्किन कॉलोनाइजर ऑफ एम आर एस ए दे हैव ए हायर रिस्क ऑफ डेवलपिंग एम आर एस ए इफ द सर्जरी इन्वॉल्व इन दो एरियाज वेर द एम आर एस ए विल बी कॉलोनाइजिंग ओके ड्यूरेशन ऑफ हॉस्पिटल स्टे लॉन्गर इज द हॉस्पिटल स्टे हायर रिस्क ऑफ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एस आई स्मोकिंग ओबेसिटी ओके ऑल दीज आर वेरियस रिस्क फैक्टर्स हायर ऊन क्लास ऊन क्लासेज मे बी ऑफ क्लीन क्लीन कंटामिनेटेड कंटामिनेटेड ऊन वी विल डिस्कस दिस इन द नेक्स्ट लाइट higher the own class higher is the risk of uh, surgery okay this particular point we will be discussing in the uh, in the next slide now there are various procedure related uh, surgery related uh, risk factors again improper uh, surgical scrub if you do not do hand scrub properly i have i have uh, told you that there are uh, uh, three type of hand hygiene uh, methods hand rub hand wash and hand scrub hand scrub is an extensive hand hygiene procedure where you have to uh, a, it has got three parts first part you have to uh, disinfect your hand up to your right elbow uh, second part you have to disinfect your hand up to the left elbow third part is you have to do a a normal uh, routine hand hygiene or hand wash where you have to clean your palm and the other areas of 